Cheers! Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, Movie Bitches. Bitches, episode 37. All right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, so tonight we are reviewing Inherent Vice. What a wonderful world this would It's about, um... <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is how I would describe it. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. This movie is The Big Lebowski in the 70s. So, like, if the dude... If we were visiting him in his early 30s, that's this movie. <laughs> Essentially. Don't you think? Essentially. I... He is a drug-toting, confused detective who runs around and meets a bunch of characters and, you know... Put takes, some shit together. Put some shit together while he takes drugs. I mean, that's basically the plot. Basically, I felt like I was watching... A film noir movie yep. while stoned off my ass. Yeah, it was great. Nothing made sense. Nope. Um, well, so the movie started, I go, and there's this really long scene where him so and his long. girlfriend are having like a conversation that you can half understand, and yep. they're both sort of whispering. And I said, what is this, based on a Thomas Pynchon novel? It was. I was correct. Yeah. There was just like so much. Called that one. There was so much subtext going on underneath the very confusing, like you know, top layer that I was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. Oh. I mean, it's like The Big Sleep or any of those old noir movies that are actually really confusing if you go back and watch them. They're very twisty, turny, confusing. Yeah. If you go back and watch okay. The Big Sleep, you'll be like, "What's going on?" Except there's less marijuana and acid and right, you know, right. like drug use. It's all more implied, which sometimes makes it even more confusing because you're mm. like, what happened? <laughs> I, w I think part of the point of this movie is you're not really supposed to know what is fully going on. I would, I would argue. I would argue that. Fine, because he doesn't quite know what's fully going on. I wouldn't say that I hated it. Well, I would hope not. But I also didn't like it. Mm. I, I was entertained for like parts, but I was also really over it. My biggest problem with the movie was the voiceover. I yeah. found it completely useless. Because it was kind and of recapping stuff that we'd already seen. Well, and or... it wasn't particularly like funny. No. You know what I mean? Like, it was Joanna Newsom did the, she was like the prophet shaman and who was she and what lady was right who's like their friend she works at a cafe I... but she does the whole voiceover and the way she talks everything sounds like a question like yeah. it, it sounded like it was like an audiobook that i would have turned off if it's a quiet night out at the beach and your ex-old lady suddenly out of nowhere shows up maybe you should just look the other way i wished the joaquin phoenix had done mm -hmm. the voiceover and then we're in his head and then he can be funny and like what's going on oh my god yeah. and it could be more like fear and loathing or one of those movies where the voiceover is actually like a character in the movie i i agree or, or like adaptation or like like man i'm stoned or like, like whatever why like, did oh, i take or whatever I, I'm fucked and up. I feel yeah. like you would have then gotten to know him better and then yeah. that or just cut it all together. But I'm really glad that Joaquin Phoenix decided not to retire. Yes. I really like him and I, I miss him. And I, I like him too. I thought he was really good. He's a fantastic actor. Yeah. I think he can kind of do anything. He's just great. He was he was excellent. I thought he really carried the whole movie. And yes. Was really funny and in it. I mean you could smell him through the camera. I mean, he looked homeless. He did. Um, but the actually, the thing that I really, the thing I like the most about this movie, it seemed to just perfectly encapsulate Southern California in the 70s. Like, the look, the people, the vibe yeah. of it all. Like, yeah. I really felt That was done well. That is and, true. And, like, the names of all the characters. It yes. was like, Petunia, Shasta, Bambi, Amethyst. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. and Martin Short shows up in this movie. Oh my god, It was yes. amazing. I oh love him. Oh my god, he was great. You know who I didn't like? Who? Um, Owen Wilson. He seemed out of place. He seemed lost. He seemed to be like, am I in a Wes Anderson movie? I was, I'm, I was literally about to say, it was like he strayed over oh, no. from the set of a Wes yeah, Anderson the, movie. He like fell in. And it was like, oh. oh well, I guess I'll run okay. with it. I guess I'm here now. Uh... <laughs> if you like Paul Astor or like any of those 
detective writers and you're into like cinematography and performances like I enjoyed it it was slow but it's a Paul Thomas Anderson movie, you know? Yeah, I mean, that was the, I, I enjoyed it, but it was slow. That's probably the best way for me to to express my feelings. Yeah. I was like, it had this, there were moments where I was like, yeah, this is entertaining, or he's right. really good, or this is good, or it looks cool for sure. Yeah. But then there were a lot of times where I was just like, oh, okay, I'm bored. Personally, I would give it like a six and a half. Is that what I always give? That's what you give everything. <laughs> Not Annie. Not Annie. Yay, Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. Keep he, making movies. He was good. Keep making, keep acting. Yes. <laughs>